Who made the salad? Did you make the salad? Oh my so god. <laughs> Great job, ladies. They're going to uh, send us their recipes and we'll put them on the website. Please. <laughs> so uh, we want to welcome you guys to the last official SDA meeting of the year. Michelle and I are very sad. Kind of. <laughs> it's not the end of the quarter. There's no, a lot of stuff going on. Just the last meeting. So don't think you're going to get off that easy. Yeah. So just to recap the winter quarter. Uh, we had a food drive. We collected 30 pounds and about $100, which I believe brings our grand total to 130 pounds of food collected and $200, $200 raised from the San Diego, LA Food Drive. Mm -hmm. Sorry, LA Food Bank. LA Food Bank. Okay. Awesome. And we have one more uh, this quarter. Uh, we had a journal meeting. About 30 people attended, which was a great turnout. Uh, Paula Jones led it. It was really informative, and I believe we're trying to get one more maybe this quarter, but I don't know if her schedule is going to allow it. A journal meeting is when we um, present a peer-reviewed journal article, and we talk about it. And, uh, Professor Hillstrom is there to guide us with um, learning how to read it and how to understand it, so you can help you with your re further research yes. for their classes. And uh, we've officially reached 140 members. But actually, members. today we've we've gone over about 152 now. Yeah. So, which is amazing. Which makes us one of the largest organizations on campus. Yeah, so we should be very proud of you. We we um we went to a finance meeting on Friday to get uh, money from ASI, which they're always trying to throw at you, but they make you jump through hoops to get it. And we got it. We got about $1,700, which is huge. Oh, yeah. And the biggest thing is because of our membership, because. You know, they um, they want to know that the money is being spread over a large population, and they're extremely impressed. And actually, one of the ASI representatives is going to be coming to this meeting to make an announcement. Extremely impressed with our membership. It's huge. And these are active, you know, I mean, not everybody's extremely active, but a lot of people are active in all different areas. So it's really exciting, and it, it's we really appreciate it. So that's great. Uh, we want to thank Gilda and Andrew and the National Nutrition Month Committee. I don't think Andrew or Gilda no, are here, not. but we want to thank them for all their hard work and for all of you guys who participated and came out to the event. It was a huge success. Um, we were really, Michelle and I were very pleased. We had nothing to do with it. Yes. So it was all you guys, and you guys did a phenomenal job. So it was great. So thank you to all the people that are here in the house. Hopefully, you all got a chance to go and experience it. All right, so um, one of our volunteer opportunities is uh, led by um, uh, Lauda, who's not here right now. Um, it's partnership with volunteers of East Los Angeles, and they work in the community to promote health and um, conscious, mindful eating. And they are based right in East LA in our neighborhood, and they run a farmer's market where they do cooking demonstrations. They have chefs come out and, and do stuff with food in the market. Um, they do a lot of uh, kid events and senior events for their population and then they do nutrition education and they just as of the end of last month they built a kitchen a very large kitchen in their facility and so we are working with them to do some kind of education program with the kids and the parents because yes you can educate students and they you can educate kids but it's really about their parents just as well so um, that's what we're trying to do right now is work on that so, if you're interested in getting involved in that, which is a great opportunity, uh, you can contact uh, Lauda, and that's her email address. And also, if you want more information about Bella, you can get it right there. But they've been around for a long time. They were started by a woman who just decided that the people in her population needed to start treating themselves better. And so she started treating it. So the great thing about Bella is that they're right in our neighborhood, literally. So it's a great opportunity to get involved, and it's close to campus, and they have so many opportunities. All right, so we still have We Fit going on. Um, how many people are attending? Um, the thing about We Fit is that it's an after-school program, and they really need consistency. So um, we do have, I know of one volunteer who's very active, and they're very pleased with them. So because, you know, you're talking with kids that do an after-school program, so they need, so that you have to go through training to work with the children. So if you can commit, you know, once a week, that's great. Um, if you can come intermittently, the after school program is probably not the best option. There's other programs. But there's tons of opportunities that there's, you know, like a farmer's market, maybe they'll do it one Friday in a month or something. So there's stuff like that you can do. There's health fairs they have intermittently. Um, and then the requirements, which you're going to find with anything in terms of working with children or in a hospital, are the TB, live scan, and volunteer paperwork, which um, I can email to you if you just send me an email. TB test can be done on campus, it's free. Live scan, you can do it on campus, it's way more expensive. 
Um, you can go off campus and find a ton of spaces, places to do it, and I can email you the paperwork that's necessary. So it's a, it's a great program. If you want to do after school, what they do after school, I know Eric has done it um, a couple of times where they do health education and they also do physical activities. And I don't know if you're aware, but a lot of the LA inner city schools do not have physical education. So, you know, and we're talking children, you know, so they spend it in, and actually the teachers are the ones that are supposed to encourage physical activity. And I don't know what your elementary school teachers were like, but if you think about your elementary school teachers, they probably weren't big athletes. So. You know, so, and they're supposed to teach you physical ed. So, you know, that's the challenge. And if kids don't learn how to play when they're younger, what are they going to do when they get older? So, and this is a great opportunity for four 18 hours for any of you guys that still need to complete that. So Everything. Is. All right, so we have a new opportunity submitted by Dr. Hillstrom. Uh, we have, it's the Downtown Women's Center. It's located on Skid Row. And they have about 200 women that stop in on a regular basis. And then they have 70 women that live on site. And what they need is they need um, four Cal State uh, student volunteers to come in one to two days a week for two hours a session, and you will actually be giving nutrition consultation to these women. So there is a training program on those two dates seen there. Um, but if you are interested in participating, the email address is right there. You'll have to go through Stephen Alvarez, and he works at the Downtown Women's Center. And uh, he'll ask you for a resume, and they, they need to review your... Um your application. They have trainings every month, actually, for oh, last year. So if you miss it in April, you can start in May or in June. Okay. Um, and they do have a curriculum. I haven't seen it. Yeah. Um, and the, the um, Stephen is just the sweetest guy you'll ever talk to on the phone. But um, Julia uh, Budniak is a student here. She's been doing this for I think four, or five, at least since January that oh, I know of. Um, and it is women who are typically, you know, homeless. And so um, the it's a difficult population yeah. to work with, but uh, very rewarding. I've volunteered with them before, and I've actually worked with Stephen. He used to do outreach, and outreach was when he'd go on the streets in Skid Row, and he'd, he'd hand out, and he'd look for predominantly women, and he'd help some men, and they'd give out toothpaste and toothbrushes and some cleaning supplies, and he'd talk to them and ask them about what they're doing and where they're living so that he could get you know, statistics, like a census, so he'd get information about the population, because ultimately that's how they get their funding, is by finding out the need of the community. The women are um, the 20 drop-in women that come in for breakfast and lunch. The center is only for women. They don't allow women with kids. The reason is they don't want kids in Skid Row. So people are always like, well, that's kind of weird. But if, if you're encouraged to come there with a child, you're going to be in that area. They don't want you to be in there. They want you to be in other parts of the city. Because if you've ever been to Skid Row, it's pretty awful. Um, and then the seven women living on site, they just, probably, 70 women living on site, they, probably about a year ago, they built a huge new facility which is beautiful, and the women pay about $150 to live there, and they have communal living. And the reason why they pay is because it shows a sense of, you know, self-worth, you know, and, and value. And a lot of the women, a lot of the women are not healthy, overweight, they've had really challenging lives, and they're getting their lives together. So they have their own rooms, they share uh, common areas, they share bathrooms, and they share meals. And they, you know, they try to do job skills and all kinds of stuff. So it's... It's a, it's a really rewarding, I've, I've gone, I've served Thanksgiving, I've served Christmas. It's a really rewarding experience and they really appreciate it. So I'm actually uh, going to get involved with them and I, I highly recommend it. And if you want more information, the website's at the bottom. Alright, so we have our big event coming next Wednesday. We're all very excited. Michelle's done an incredible job. She's been able to secure 16 RDs as of yesterday. Yeah. So we have 16 RDs and they're from... And a special guest. And a special guest, yes. <laughs> uh, and so, um, and only one of them is a faculty member. So the only faculty member is Pacheco, Dr. Pacheco, or Professor Pacheco. And we have, uh, from all different disciplines, we have sports nutrition, public policy, community nutrition, clinical. Um, so any facet that you can think of. And most of the RDs, as Michelle was explaining to me, have a variety of backgrounds. So um, it'll be cool because you can actually just sit in at a table and talk to them about the different occupations they've done, because all of them have done a variety of different things. Um, we are requiring that you dress a business casual, please. This is a professional meet and greet. Uh, so no jeans, no sneakers. Um, we really want to show them like the caliber of the students on this campus. And we feel that we could do that best by dressing professionally. Um, it's from 11 to 1. It's going to be in the Golden Eagle Ballroom, which is on top of the cafeteria. 
on the third floor. Um, and we recommend you arrive a little before 11 to register and receive a booklet of all the RDs and their bios. And anything else? Yeah, we're gonna. Sorry. <laughs> we're gonna be really strict on the dress code. So if you do come in with jeans and sneakers, we are gonna not to let you in. Just because it's just think of it as a career fair. A lot of these, a lot of these RDs are preceptors. A lot of people are contacts you can make in the future. You never know what can come out of it, and you want to be presentable. And we want to be presentable as an organization. So. Um, yeah. Is this something like, say, a class that starts in the middle of it? Could you come for part of it? And then it, part you, of it like yeah, you can come as, as little or as big as you want. Um, for instance, like our MNT class, uh, our class is required to go. So uh, that's, you know, that situation. Um, you know, also, if it's a nutrition class, you can always talk to your professor, you know, and say, hey, this is what's going on. And most likely they'll be like, oh, you know. Most of the nutrition professors know this is going on. So. And there will be a light lunch service. <coughs> And it's free if you're a member. If you're not a member, it's $5. You know. And uh, basically the way it'll be structured is there'll be 16 round tables. There'll be an RD at each table with about nine other spots. And basically every 10 minutes or so, you'll be asked to go to a different table. So you have 10 minutes to engage with the RD. You can go back to the RD if you'd like to. Um, there's no real structure as to which RDs you have to see because you won't be able to see all 16. Um, but um, every 10 minutes you'll be required to switch. And you are getting a program book, and the program book has their pictures and their bios, so you can take a look at it and, um, and, uh, and decide who you want to target. And then, there you go. Yeah. Yes? Um, do you guys need anybody to, like, come in maybe? Yes. Like, yes. Like, yeah, if you're interested in helping, uh, please email Michelle, either at our Cal State LA or um, even the SDA email address. As well. Or just show up at the ballroom at 9 a.m. You know, because um, we are doing decorations and um, we're giving all the RDs gift bags. And it's not a lot of stuff, but it's nice to have the bodies there. And also, um, we're also providing parking, and so we have to coordinate with them. You know, where to meet us on campus and. Um, <coughs> And, you know, they're very, a lot of them are very excited. A lot of them are like, wow, what a great idea. So they're just as excited to meet you as you are to meet them. And they're donating their time. <laughs> yes, they're donating their time. So we want to be very nice. Yeah. And we want to make sure they get food and they get drink and, you know. Treat it with respect. So, yes. Um, I was just going to mention that the first time I ever was on this campus was four or five years ago at this a similar event. Uh, and this is way nicer than what they did five years ago. But um, I was working in community nutrition, and I had a, couple, a number of students approach me who I actually ended up um, having to start intern with me, kind of volunteering with me. So you never know who you're going to meet. And if you're really proactive, you may be put this in your, next, your internship or your next volunteer. Absolutely. Space. So it's a, I'm so glad you guys took the ball around that it's, gonna, it's, again, way more organized than what we went to. I like, this vision of what it was like that time. But this is great. Um, just for instance, we have RGs from, uh, we have the team dietitian from UCLA. Uh, we have sports nutritionists. Sports nutritionists. We have um, people that own their own consulting companies. Off the top of my head, nutrition for, I forgot what it's called. But um, she does consulting for food services for the, um, for the food industry and for schools. And she also teaches at Pepperdine. Um, and also their backgrounds. I mean, we have an RG that got her, RG went to uh, Cornell. You know, so so it's like it's just not just beyond what they're doing, but where they've come from. So the bios they're only going to be available just before the event. Well, the ideal situation is that. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> if anybody can't realize it, it's that right? I mean, okay. Um, I would love to email it out to everybody before the event, or if I can get the program books done before, maybe I can pass them out on Wednesday. Okay. Um, it honestly it just depends on timing and cost. We can PDF them and then put them on the website so that they can just click on it. Okay. That's probably what we're going to do. Okay. Yes, they will be up before. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so we have another food drive. It's Saturday the 28th at, again, the Whole Foods in Pasadena. It's also the same weekend of the CDA conference. Uh, so just something to keep in mind for those of you that are attending. I believe Rebecca has. You have all your volunteers. You have all your volunteers, but if you want to come so out, none support, of you can go. 
<laughs> or donate. Um, she'd love to see you there. Or if you are really, really interested in volunteering, I'm sure Rebecca can make a spot for you also. Or, you know what, if you're really interested in volunteering, you can do another food drive in a couple weeks. Yeah, there you go. There's motivation. So yeah. there you go. So hook up with Rebecca. Yeah. Um, and then our farm box is taking effect this quarter. Yay! And here's Kayla. Okay, so those of you who are already subscribed to the farm box, you might have realized that our first drop-off was supposed to be today. Unfortunately, the farm that we coordinated with ran out of vegetables. Does not have more produce. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so, um, and I apologize for the late notice. They told me at 2 o'clock yesterday mm -hmm. that they weren't going to be able to do the drop off. So we are switching providers, going to someone who are a little higher degree of professionalism. And the first drop will most probably be on Tuesdays now, on uh, April the 24th. I get the final bid today, so you will get an email out probably at the end of the week with the new schedule. Um, the new farm we're using is Save Raw Organic, so you can go online and look at their site. It also gives you a little bit more control. You can choose vegetable-only boxes or fruit-only boxes. They have special smaller size juice boxes in case you're really into juicing. And you can also add on to your individual boxes. So it gives you a little more control into specifically what you're getting. It does not allow you to pick every vegetable. Just to get that question out there, you'll still have a random assortment of seasonal vegetables. But we're really excited about this new um, farm. And any of you who would still like to get involved, we still have spots open. We have a few open. If you'd like to sign up for fresh organic produce on campus, you can just see me after the meeting. And also, did you? Um, oh, I was just gonna say, did you say that they they were interested in with creating a garden? A garden? Yeah, they um, give two percent of all the proceeds back to community gardens. So they also said that if we are interested, I know there are people on campus interested in creating a community garden, that they would help provide financial support for that. Mm -hmm. cool. So the more we spend, the more money we get. That. Yeah, you would be able to go online and select what you wanted, you, as long as you tell them three days before the drop-off. And is there like a special area for like the CSULA program? Yeah, there'll be um, a, a SDA like oh. login where you can go in. And we do recommend people, because they are slightly larger boxes, you might want to join up and make a box buddy. If you have a friend, if you know you live by yourself and maybe a whole big box is going to be a little too much now, we can always trade back and forth and create a box that you can share with you. And also, here's Kayla's email if you want to give you more questions about that. Story. Yes. Or we you can always send to the phone. Oh, the website email. too. So. Yes. Mm -hmm. oh. So, thanks again. Oh, Erica. Um, for the community garden thing, is the idea like you rent out hot space and then you can. There's a group on campus right now who's trying to create a community garden, and um, I'm involved with that group, and right now it's been a little difficult getting the university to assign us a lawn area, because we don't have a lot of Can we just take one over? area on campus. Start hoeing the front wall. So, uh, we, the, the university has been open, so set aside some of the open lawn areas for a small farm, a small garden, but this is in the very early stages. Okay. But if you want to get involved, <laughs> you can bring your tea sandwiches. So if you don't specify those, then you're going to get a fruit and vegetable. Yeah, a mixed box. Okay. All right, so um, we are doing a, uh, an event in conjunction with Dr. Calderon. It's uh, community, uh, community Outreach Barriers to Cal Fresh, and it's basically a bunch of community organizations uh, community gardens and other uh, uh, policy advocacy groups talking about why uh, if you're not familiar with CalFresh that's the food stamp program in the state of California and it's underutilized um, and they're trying to figure out why because um, there's a lot of money there and any government agency if there's a lot of money and nobody uses it they want to take it away and they don't there are big organizations Hunger Action Now is that the name? And they don't, they want you to use the money. So anyway, so she's putting together this event in conjunction with us. And it's free to all members. And if you want to go, we're just going to get a sign-up list with your email address. And we're going to hand it over to her. And um, it's a great opportunity to engage with organizations and talk about the barriers. And I mean, just from our conversation with uh, ASI and Dr. Caldwell, we found out, like, for instance, there was a graduate student on the ASI uh, Finance Committee who's a full-time 
graduate student, and she works volunteers 40 hours, and she can't get CalFresh. She's been denied. And the reason was? Uh, I think she misunderstood our question because I think she thought she worked 40 hours a week. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, but she was like, I can't get CalFresh. Why? And so it was a great opportunity that if she comes to the event, she can ask that question and find out. So, and it's open to all, um, anybody. It's free, there'll be food. Um, it's May 2nd, 6 to 9, in the Golden Eagle Ballroom 2. So we'll have a sign-up sheet if you want to go, and, and uh, Dr. Calderon can take your name down and drive you a space. And you can also get 418 hours. And then the end of the year banquet. So I'm very excited about this. Um, we are having a fabulous banquet for anyone and everyone who's a SDA volunteer. It's our opportunity to say thank you. It's going to have great food. We are going to uh, publicly appreciate everyone that's been involved. And those people will be getting personalized emails, so you have to come. Um, or we'll hunt you down and give you what we need to give you um, to show our appreciation. Um, it's from 9 to 11. It's on a Wednesday, May 30th. It's in the Golden Eagle Ballroom. It's going to have a buffet brunch. And um, it's going to be awesome. And you have to RSVP because we need to know the count for the food. So I highly uh, encourage you to attend. It's going to be a really good event. And if you'd like to, no, that's it. You can't help. Yeah, you, can you can't help. We're not allowing anyone to help. <laughs> so we have our Mr. February. Yay! Lisa's been really involved, not just this year, but um, in past years. Um, he's on the CDP. He's pretty much amazing. So we just want to acknowledge him for all his hard work. So, for those of you who don't know, we select we select a member of the month who's been, you know, who's just been really outstanding for that month. So, so your reign continues. So you're still Mr. February. So, so you know, refer to her as Mr. February. And then. Miss March. Miss March is Erica Hayden, who's awesome. She's been wonderful girl from that Got a lot of reward. Got a lot of awesome donations and prizes for the organization for the event. Uh, she's been consistently involved all year. She's phenomenal. And we hope you're both at the banquet. Yes. <laughs> so yay! Um, <laughs> So Michelle and I uh, would love to do this again next year, but per the Constitution, we are not allowed. Right? Yes. Um, so uh, we would love for a couple of you guys to step up and take over so SDA can continue. We've had a wonderful year, um, and Michelle and I are not leaving. So um, we're not just going to throw you to the wolves like we kind of were. So, um, and we will help you, we will make the transition as smooth as possible, we will be here to help you with all the events. Um, so, if you want to be president, co-president, um, uh, vice president, treasurer, secretary, uh, we've had a few of you email us and we have your name, so if any of you are interested, again, please sign up with us. And it's not just, I mean, it's, it's also, it's um, keeping the momentum of the year because we've done some great events and we hope to keep them going and we've gotten incredible feedback. And just the fact that we have over 150 members is pretty awesome and we want to continue that. But it's also, you know, if you've got ideas that benefit the organization and you'll learn. I mean, we've done stuff that didn't work, so that you will never know about. So, uh, <laughs> so um, you know, so you give and take and you find what people want to do and you empower people. So. Um, it, it, it's it's well worth it. I highly recommend it. And you know, honestly, wonderful experience. And I couldn't have done it without Nicole. I mean, there's no, no, it's totally true. There's just, it's just too much. And having a sounding board and feedback is huge because we're very different, but we complement each other so well. So, and like, you know, having an amazing board with Monica and Rebecca and Danielle, who unfortunately can't be here because she had to take a dog to the vet for the emergency room. Um, but um, you know, we all work together as a team, and it's it's really important. So. These are responsibilities if you're interested in. Um, now, these are what we defined. Some worked, some didn't work. It depends on what you want to do. You know, Monica is our web person, so because that's what she does. So that's why she runs a website. Um, you know, that, that's, that, that's her skill, and that's, you know, so it works. So maybe it doesn't work the next time, but, you know, it's something to put out there. So these are um, the uh, responsibilities that we created. Whether or not you continue is totally up to you. Um, and, um, and if you want to create positions, that's the future co-president or president's authority to do so. We just kept it pretty simple. Um, 
So we just had the basics. But if you're interested in any avenue, you know, please step forward. If you want to be a historian, I don't know. We, and we'll have a sign-up sheet. really passionate about, then I'm sure we can create it. Or you can create it. You can create it, yes. It will be done. And um, <laughs> we have a sign-up sheet, and we'll probably have a meeting. And I know um, people have shown interest, but they haven't. They're like, I don't know what to do. And I'm like, come to the meeting. Figure it out. Talk to people, you know. Yeah. There's, there's always something that can happen, you know. And, and it's whatever you want to make of it. And we especially encourage you, if you um, still have classes to take here next year, um, it's a perfect opportunity to let the professors know how amazing you are. Um, we right? Have, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good way to be noticed, too. So it's a lot of work, but it's a wonderful experience. You get to know a lot of people really well, um, and everyone's so wonderful. So and it's, it, it's really about the members, too. Yeah. I mean, we, we could create all these programs, but if nobody does anything, it doesn't mean yeah. anything. So, and that's the feedback that we get. So um, it's great. And also, Laura, this is Laura. She's the chair for Vela. So I just wanted, you know, Vela, the community, the uh, outreach. outreach. So if you're interested in getting involved, you can also talk to her. She's ready. I spoke to Josie Cervantes, and the kitchen is ready for nutritional science students who need hours for 14 or 14 um, A with Dr. Foundation so they can, um, you can volunteer the kitchen doing um, nutrition recipes, being involved with um, Latino, the Latino community and other communities and so you can get more involved. Just contact me and um, give you a volunteer application for Great. more information. And that's great, and that's something that, like, that's an organization we want to keep that going for years and years and years, because they're right here, you know. And then the webmaster. And that's really important, because for us, the website has been an enormous help to communicate, and hopefully you've actually seen it, so, um, to communicate information. So, um, another thing that's really important. And, you know, like, um, recipes. You know, Renata is our favorite in terms of recipes, but... If you have recipes that you've made food, she made the great, what are they called? The power bars. The power bars. We're not made the power bars. So if you've got an amazing recipe, I mean, she just makes these in her kitchen off the top of her head. Um, and it's pretty amazing. So we share them with volunteers. And so, you know, it's, there's all kinds of good stuff on the website. Yeah. Well, kind of like, I don't know what it's called, but platform or program or whatever you use to run the website. Do you want to... Uh, talk to her after the meeting because yeah, let's talk after. none of us will have any clue what you're talking yeah. about. <laughs> I'm just like, Monica, do this, please. I don't know what it means. And we don't want all our hard work to go to waste. I mean, her and Ray built it from the ground up, so um, I'm sure she'd be very upset if no one tended to it from the ground up. So she put a lot of and hard Monica work And Monica will be here, so maybe you can pay her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, awesome. Today we've had new members join, which is great. $10 for the rest of the year. Um, T-shirts are on sale for $10. It's a bargain. Um, if you're interested in any opportunities, please email the contacts or contact us directly if that makes it easier for you. And, um, and it's been a great year. And we want to say thank you for all your enthusiasm and energy if, you, if we don't see you at our banquet. And um, thank you for making most, all of ours, I don't, because we're not done, but they're going to be all great. And, it's just been a really good year. We want to thank you all for, for yeah. the support. And uh, we have a couple of announcements before we end. One of them is I just got this from ASI. We put on a health, the ASI puts on a health fair every year. It's this year, it's May 9th from noon to 3. It's during MNT, so those of us in MNT can't participate. But they want, it's a Wednesday. Yeah, it's a Wednesday. So um, they need just a couple of SDU members that want to run a booth. Um, I'm pretty sure it's free range. You can talk about whatever you want to. You can have, you know, related to health. Yeah, related to health. So, um, yeah, not everything you want to. Um, so they want us to continue the tradition we've done it the last two years. So if anyone's interested, please see me, and I can put you in contact with Carmen at ASI. And we'll so. also send out an email about it. Yeah. Well. And it's, you know, for 18 hours. Definitely. And then Dr. Uh, Professor Hillstrom has a announcement. announcement. Um, a couple of things, I'm kind of following up with the, the executive board for next year. What was so impressive about this group is that they started last summer. And so we were in contact, um, I swear I get emails from them, <laughs> one a day. You're welcome. <laughs> it's been great, um, it's often more than one a day, um, uh, since last summer. So they started putting it together. And so my suggestion for the group was let's try to get our executive board for next year in place 
this quarter so that you guys can start the summer and then fall will be ready to go. And then they can also train you. So we are actively looking for people um, for next year. And just if you don't want to take a leadership role um, for the whole year, you can just pick and pick and choose an event or something that you're interested in. So don't feel overwhelmed. Um, but I'm going to take the 317 class because we have every quarter we get new students in. And, but I, I, what worked so nicely is that you guys got, got going early. Um, a couple things I want to mention. I'm going to start passing it around now. Um, um, I solicited a couple quarters ago uh, some students to help me do, well, help USC and me do research on the new uh, menu labeling law. As many of us know, and Luis has been actively involved, I think Lisa, Sam, and Elietta have been doing it too. Um, do it. You're going today. Um, they, a law was passed in California um, mandating that restaurants and whatever 20, I think 20 sites put up the, the, uh, the calories, but no one has ever assessed whether it really even works or whether there's any point in doing it. Um, I'm sure you guys have some amazing stories to share, but there's um, this, this group that I used to work with got a grant, I'm still working with, got a grant to go out and, ident and they've identified Culver City, Manhattan Beach, East LA, and South LA. I, I can't remember how many fast food restaurants they want to be, but it's a lot. And we need students who are going to be around over the summer and in the fall uh, on an ongoing basis who can help out. It's not something you can just do once. It's a commitment to continue to do research, um, great on the resume, and the, one of the women who's coordinating it, uh, Megan, she actually works for RAM, which I don't think I know where. She's amazing. And, um, I actually thought of Rebecca because she came in my office yesterday. She's a new student saying she wants to do research. I'm like, okay, this would be a good opportunity for some of you new, newer people. And those of you who need hours, need resume builders, um, everybody really needs to get their internship. But uh, last time I did this, I had 50 names on the list, and I think there are five of you who actually ended up doing it, which is fine. But if you really think you want to do it and commit to it, potentially this summer and in the fall, please write your name down. Again, it's not a one time for a couple hours. It's more than that, yeah. So what do you, you go to the factory? Sam, Elieta, you guys, tell them what you do. I'll yeah. start passing around the list. Got it. Well, they figure you have a little bit of training. You have to go online and take some ethics class, which is kind of like a standardized ethics exam, which is everyone kind of passes it because you get multiple chances to do it. And then you go. <laughs> so if you have to come good the first time. And then time, you go. go. <laughs> <laughs> they train you on how to, it's just a survey. And then you ask like 30 questions on a survey, and you stop families that are coming out of these fast food restaurants, Alpha, 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 well, I think they actually closed up. Um, they already they closed up all the They really need help in Manhattan Beach. Yeah, they told me it's a great idea. Yeah, if you, you approach family, uh, people that are leaving the fast food, right? They're coming out um, who have children. Because that stipulation is they have to have a child. It's a, we actually got the grant for looking at children. There's a lot more money from children than it's for adults. <laughs> really. They don't care about you by then. Um, and they ask questions like, how many calories do you think your child needs? What did you eat? It takes, what, 10 minutes? It's a, yeah, it's a little rough. It's you not know, like the talk to somebody with a clipboard. But mm -hmm. the one good thing about it is you have a five dollar coupon that you give them, so they're getting something. What are them for the for the five dollar coupon? The only way they could do it, I know, is send it for a few kids. Well, send up releases. They give you up to a few kids and after approach. And so if you're asking questions, um, you don't want to say like, oh, like they're asking questions. You want to say you don't want to say. Just give us a guess. Like you were asking one question, how many calories do you think you need in a day? And she's like, yes. And you'll have people say, I don't know, 200? Why can't you answer? Just the idea. Uh, we need to ask them for things like that. Oh, yeah, okay, one thing, um, for the kids, they usually don't know the height, so they give them a check, they don't you. And they say, okay, how do you, so you mind to make sure your child or like that? Make sure the child's height, and oh, go, eat that. So that way, they give the child a like, make sure to pay with. Because sometimes, like uh, parents um, with children, like especially with the young, grow really fast, so they might not know the height, but they probably do in the way. So little things like that, and um, 
after asking like rather big questions, I mean, it's pretty much structured like question one, question two, question two, say no, go to question three, a, or something like that. So it's pretty much structured. So it's, it might be 30 questions, but really you're not asking 30, you might be asking like 22, depending on how they ask. Most people are really nice and they're really
Um, I'm I'm staying with someone else. They they double you up on the program, so not with the family. Not with the family. Okay. Yeah, this sounds like a great experience. You get to see something new, learn about a new culture. Um, and again, for a lot of people, it's it, if you have family who might be prohibitive, and if you it's a lot of money, but they also can help you with the fundraising. It's just an opportunity. We also um, after they came to campus, I met with a group of faculty from HHS who are interested in starting some kind of programs with in Mexico because it's so close. You can literally drive down there. And she did some um, psychology classes at the university in Tijuana, and she has some connections there. So she wrote a whole list of all the places that we could go that we could drive to and do a day or two of intervention without having to raise thousands of dollars. So look for that next year and we'll see what we can motivate to get done and maybe do some exchange with, with Mexico. Although I heard that it's we're not allowed as Cal State LA employees or students to cross the border because of the danger right now. So we're going to figure that one out. That's a, an obstacle uh, we'll deal with that next year. So. Um, I just think all these experiences are invaluable to you guys. Um, there's a lot that we need to work on here, but sometimes when you go to another country, you realize, yeah, it's hard here, but it's worse most other places, in many other places. So. But, um, so if you have direct questions, ask Renata, but I also am sending out that information to um, so all of you guys will post it on the SBA website. All right. Awesome, thank you.